Hi, it's Kat from HowToGimp.com, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to remove or reduce glare on glasses in your pictures. We're going to go from a glare that looks like this to this. And while the glare isn't completely removed, it is a lot better. If you're brand new to GIMP, this might be a slightly advanced tutorial for you. And I really recommend that you already know how to use layers, layer masks, and how to use the basic functions of GIMP, like using its tools, changing colors, the foreground and background color, and be somewhat familiar with the GIMP layout. If all of this is brand new to you, you might want to check out my book, Before and After, A Beginner's Guide to Free Photo Editing in GIMP, and that's available at howtogimp.com, and it's only 12 bucks, so it won't break your bank. But while this is a slightly more advanced technique, it's not completely difficult. In fact, I think it's pretty easy, especially if you're already familiar with GIMP's layout and its basic tools and functions. So if you're feeling brave and you're feeling up for it, keep watching and I'll show you how to do it. I've already done some basic correction to this photo. I've already adjusted the brightness and the contrast and I've already fixed any color issues that I had. Now that I've already done those simple corrections, I'm gonna move on to actually removing the glare from the glasses in this picture. So when I look at this picture, I see that the left lens has a lot more glare on it than the right lens does. And I'm gonna use that to my advantage. Since eyes are basically symmetrical in most people, and I realize there are exceptions, but in my case, my eyes are basically symmetrical, I can copy the lens that has less reflection on it, flip it, and then paste it over the lens that has more reflection on it. And that will give the appearance of having less reflection on both sides of the glasses. To do that, I'm gonna start by selecting the lens that has less reflection. So I'm just gonna grab the lasso tool from the toolbox. It looks like a lasso. And then I'm gonna draw around the lens. I don't really need to be exact, but I do need to make sure that I get all the way around the area that on the opposite side, there's a lot of reflection. Cause I want enough material here to be able to cover up the reflection on this side. Now that I have that selected, I went all the way around, started here, went all the way around back to the beginning, and I know it's a selection because it's turned into marching ants or these little dotted moving lines here. Now I can go to edit, copy, and that will copy the contents of this selection. Now I need somewhere to paste this selection because I don't want to paste it directly on top of the picture. I want to paste it on a new transparent layer, which will keep it more editable. To add a new transparent layer, I'm just going to go down here to my layers dialog. The tab looks like a stack of papers. If you don't have your GIMP set up the same way mine is, your layers dialog might be in a different place, but the tab looks the same. Looks like this stack of, stack of papers and it says layers. So I'm just gonna right click on my background layer thumbnail. It looks like the picture that I have open. And I'm gonna come up here to new layer. I'm gonna choose transparency for the layer fill type and then click okay. And this is where I'm gonna paste my copied lens. So now that I have this layer and I make sure that it's selected, I can go to edit, paste, and click this little anchor button to anchor that floating selection onto this layer that really commits the paste. Okay, you won't see a difference now because I just pasted what I copied exactly on top of where it was already. So it doesn't look like anything's changed. But if I go to layer, transform, flip horizontally, you'll see that area that I copied flips horizontally so it's a mirror image. And now I can grab the move tool and then click and drag that copied lens into position. Now, I don't know if I've gotten this in the exact right space. 
and it can be kind of tricky to see maybe it's a little bit too low maybe it's a little bit too high I don't want to make my eyes look funny by not having this copied eye in the right place so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna in the layers dialog go to this opacity slider I'm gonna move it down to 50% or so maybe even lower until I can see the layer that's underneath the layer with the reflection and what I'm doing is I'm making this layer temporarily more transparent. I'm, GIMP is letting me see through this layer temporarily so that I can kind of gauge if I have the layer on top in the right position versus where the eye on the bottom is. And it looks like I need to move it. So here's the layer on top and there's the layer on the bottom. So I think I need to move the layer on top up a little bit and I think I need to move it to the right a little bit so I'm gonna grab the move tool again I've already got it and I'm gonna click here and since this is a fine adjustment I'm just gonna use the arrow keys on my keyboard to kind of nudge that copied lens over just a little bit And that looks a lot better. That looks a lot more like the irises are lining up. Okay, now that we've got everything lined up, um, I want to erase some of the edges from where I copied so that the lens that I pasted here blends in better with the actual, with my face underneath. And you'll be able to see a little bit better what I'm talking about if I zoom in. So you can see there, are these hard edges here all around here and I don't want those so you can do this in one of two ways you can either grab the eraser tool looks like a little rubber eraser and then go to your tool options dialog and choose a soft edged brush I'm just gonna grab a round brush and just use the eraser tool to erase those edges but the method I prefer is actually to use a layer mask. A layer mask works a lot like erasing does, except it lets you erase and unerase at will. So you, if you go over a little bit too much or you uh, erase just a little bit too much, you can undo it very easily. To add a layer mask to this lens layer, I'm gonna right click and choose add layer mask. I'm gonna choose a white mask to begin with. A white mask isn't gonna hide anything. It's going to reveal all of the layer. Now I'll click add. Since a white mask doesn't hide anything, you're not gonna see any difference until you actually start painting black on the mask. So I'm gonna click on the mask to make sure the mask is selected and grab a paintbrush. Make sure your foreground color is set to black. If it's not, you can click this little teeny tiny black and white box here, and that will set your foreground color to black and your background color to white. And using a soft edged brush, and I'm gonna make mine a little bit bigger, I'm gonna go about this the same exact way as I would if I was using the eraser. So I'm just gonna go around all of these edges and I'm gonna hide the edges of the lens that I pasted. And I'm even gonna go so far as to hide a little bit of the eye here so that it looks more like my natural eye does. So you can see as I painted, my mask now has that black that I painted on it. Part of my eye got a little bit fuzzy because it's revealing that reflection that's underneath. So I'm gonna hide that again by using this two-way pointing arrow to flip-flop my foreground and background colors and make my foreground color white. Now white's gonna reveal the layer. And since this layer doesn't have as much reflection on it, I want to make sure that I leave enough of this layer showing so that as much of my eye as possible doesn't have a reflection on it. Okay, with that simple little change, we've made a really big difference. I'm just gonna turn off the visibility of it by clicking its eye icon here in the layers dialog. You can see what it looked like before. And now, 
it looks a lot better. Now the next technique that you might want to try is using the clone tool to stamp over parts of the reflections on your glasses. What you'll want to do is right click on any layer and click new from visible. And that's gonna make a new layer that's a combination of all of the layers that you had before. To use the clone stamp tool, you can grab it from the toolbox. It looks like a rubber stamp. You can make your brush an appropriate size either by using the left and right bracket keys on your keyboard or by setting its size and brush shape in the tool options dialog. To actually clone, first you set a source and the source is what you're copying with the clone tool. To set the source, hold control on your keyboard and click. A crosshairs with a circle around it in the shape of your brush will appear where you set the source. Now to paste, all you have to do is move your mouse to the area that you want to paste over and click again. This particular method isn't actually going to work that well on this photo. And that's because I don't have a lot of good source areas to copy from. If the reflection were more down here, I could easily copy an area here and then paste here to sort of hide some reflection. But since it's directly on top of my eye, that makes it a little bit harder to find the right kind of source to paste over the reflection. So I'm just going to leave it as it is without using the clone tool in this instance. And the last technique I want to show you is just to darken those reflections just a little bit so they're less noticeable. To do that, first I'm going to copy this visible layer. I'm going to make a duplicate of it. And to do that, I'm just going to right click on it and choose duplicate layer. Now I'm going to make this entire layer darker. And to do that, I'm going to go to colors, levels. When the levels window pops up, I'm going to drag this middle slider here to the right just a little bit. I don't want to overdo it. And then I'm going to click OK. If I turn off this layer temporarily, you can see that it actually is darker than the layer below. And now I'm going to add a layer mask to this darker layer. So I'm going to right click again and choose add layer mask. And this time I'm going to choose a black mask and that will hide everything that's on this layer to start with. So I'll click add and you can see just like when I turned off the visibility of this layer, adding a black mask hides the whole layer. So I just see the lighter layer underneath. That's this layer here. To reveal parts of this layer that I made darker, I can paint white on this layer mask. So again, I'm going to grab the paintbrush. I'm going to make sure my foreground color is set to white. Again, I'm going to make sure that my brush is a soft edged brush and I'm going to make sure that it's an appropriate size. And then I'm probably going to turn down the opacity of the brush just a little bit, maybe to 50%. And that's so this darkening effect isn't quite so strong. It's not quite so harsh because I want this darkening effect to really blend in with the rest of the photo and I don't want it to be very obvious. So I'm just going to paint a little bit over some of these reflections. And again, I'm making sure that my layer mask is selected. See, it's got a white outline around it, so I know it's selected. And if you're unsure, you can always just click it again. Nothing's going to get hurt if you just click it again. Uh, and then I'm just going to continue to paint just a little bit over these reflections. And it may be a little bit hard at first to see the difference, but I will show you how it looks after I'm done. So now if I turn off this darker layer again, and this darker layer is only showing the areas that I painted with white, it's only showing the darker areas of these reflections here and nothing else. So if I turn off its visibility again, 
you should see those reflections getting brighter again. Since each picture is different, you're going to probably end up using a combination of these techniques and maybe even some others that I haven't mentioned to really get rid of the reflections or at least tone them down. There will be certain reflections that you just can't get rid of completely, and sometimes you won't be able to remove or reduce them at all. But these are just a few of the techniques that I use to help reduce those really harsh glares. 